You heard the saying, all right? It's better to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. The people that usually say that are Miata owners, MG owners, and Ruckus owners, because that's pretty much all we got going on for you. Now, spoiler alert, I've owned all of them, so I'm gonna talk a little bit of smack, but I love them all, and they have a dang point, because driving a slow car fast is way more fun than the opposite way around, even though you look really cool in a fast car, all right, sometimes. But how do you do that? Like, how do you actually drive a slow car fast? You just thrash gears and watt everything and everywhere where you possibly can? Well, uh, kind Kinda, but not really. I'm Alex, Alex had a fine Instagram. Today we're gonna be talking about how you can make a slow car feel fast with just a few Cholula steps to your car and your willingness to live maybe coming down a step or two because you prefer to have a little bit of fun. All right, well, let's go. And if you're just jumping into one of these videos, Buenas tardes. YouTube do not put us in Spanish speaking. That's all I've got, okay? The rest is English. My dad gets mad that I don't keep my Spanish speaking skills, but honestly, this is not very popular up here in Wisconsin. Anyway, hope you're doing well. I got socks for Christmas. It was a pretty good time. I got these pants, not entirely sure how I feel about it. And hopefully everybody had a chance to relax a little bit before jumping into the new year. I'm grateful, you're grateful, I love you. Maybe that's a strong word. If you're looking for non-itchy gifts though, like wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to check us out over at fitmentindustries.com where you have everything your little heart could possibly need. And of course, if you wanna check out our gallery, we have one of the fastest growing online galleries in the world. Just saying, it's pretty neat. You can check out what fits your car and it's a pretty fun time. Driving a slow car fast is like my MO. It is like what I, how I used to live my life because ladies and gentlemen, I have and had a lot of slow cars. I had a 3000 GTSL, like six Miatas, a B7A4 that even with a bigger turbo was like a dog. I had another Miata that had a shot of nitrous in it and a few others. And I'm pretty sure the neighborhood bikes could take me on any straight that you could possibly imagine. But I learned a few tricks along the way that made the car either feel faster or actually did make it a little bit quicker without costing me much money at all, like none. Or, 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 or very, very little. And sometimes this is nice because if you are jumping into your first or second car, a lot of times you're saving money for a really big purchase on your car. Maybe you are gonna do a turbo swap or a supercharger or something like that that's really gonna wake up the car. But until then, you just got a slow V6. Number one, most definitely was remembering that manuals and low horsepower sports cars need to stay in higher RPMs to have any source of fun. We often forget that with the smaller horsepower cars and feel like we can't keep up when the SS or the ZL1 fly by over our 200 horsepower BRZ or FRS. And while that may be true, and the fact that you're probably not gonna keep up with them on some sort of highway or going 160 miles an hour, that's not exactly where you're stuck having the fun, all right? Because you can keep it in the upper halves of the RPMs when doing the back road cruising and feel like you're going just as fast. And sometimes you'll even feel, or you are going faster than your SS or ZL1 friends. It'll feel a little odd at the beginning because 90% of the time we're driving a car, we're trying to drive it at the lowest RPM possible to save on gas and for cruising potential. And I'm telling you that when you're going on the back roads and you're cruising around and you wanna really make the car feel fast, you wanna make that 1.6 liter scream, keep her up in the RPM range, all right? Make it scream bloody murder. Because when you do that and it had a test pipe or a proper muffler, if you don't have enough cash for a full exhaust, the sound will encapsulate you in the back roads and between the engine screaming and the exhaust sounding like a solid nine out of 10, you'll feel like you're going fast, even though you may only be going like 47 in a 45. It's the quick gearing, it's the high RPM sounding. It's when you really start to feel the car come alive. Another common tip is driving slow cars fast is hard when you're faster than the car. Now hear me out. When you really think about it, you want your modifications initially to be built around making your slower cars feel faster by like reducing the amount of lag between the input of a driver's interaction with the car and the car's output based on that driver's feedback. It's kind of like real life lag. The more you can decrease it, the more connected you're gonna feel with the car. The more connected you feel with the car, the faster you feel like you can interact with it, which then kind of feels the faster that you're driving it. The most common places this is seen is in the steering rack and the shifter slash transmission. Now, not everyone has $4,000 for a transmission, a new clutch, and a housing swap. So let's keep it easy and affordable. So first and probably best thing you can do is upgrade to a short throw shifter. Now, nothing insane, all right? Still don't understand the ones, like the one short throw shifters that are like underneath the housing of the Miata. It's like you have the case and then you have to put your hand in the hole to shift it. I don't really understand that. But just a typical, 
full moderate short throw shifter. A full short throw shifter gearing setup is a great modification for a slow car. But remember, a short throw shifter is not just a shifter that's short. It's an assembly. There's a whole thing to it. You're just gonna wanna make sure you keep that in mind. A short throw shifter will help reduce the angle of the shaft or your shifter, and it changes the pivot point. And even if you take out the performance implications of a properly installed short throw shifter, the ability to get through gears faster, used for acceleration and deceleration with the clutch instead of your brakes, and just the fast paced ability to have like your hand, you do the shift, you throw it back on the steering wheel faster, kind of just speeds up the experience with the car. And a lot of times it's gonna make you feel like you have a faster car. It's gonna make you feel like you're driving quick, even though you're really not. And don't forget, a lot of times when you are able to shift faster, you can throw that hand back up onto the steering wheel and you're gonna have just more fun preparing for the next turn versus waiting and having tea as you wait for the RPMs to dwindle as your car wakes up from its slumber in between the gears. It's all loosey-goosey. It's like wet mashed potatoes in there and you just don't wanna do that. And number three would be practicing on how to make the most out of that lovely little clunker of a car. What do I mean by that? Well, honestly, it's a like practicing, practicing our driving. Being more meticulous and manual with everything that you do. Really practicing and preaching all the little details of what makes a car fast by, from like a driver's perspective. It's like a driver's mod. Heel toe, manual rev matching, and finding the edge of what your car can do is like the best way to make a slow car feel fast. I used to have a friend, his name was Michael Shaw, who had a cafe racer, all right? It was built by himself in our garage when we were going through school together and I had my 280Z and I blew it up, which was felt like every few months. And we had a lot of fun in that tiny cold two car garage. And I also had a bike at the time, but spent more time on a car than a bike. And his cafe racer wasn't quick by any means. And it had more bark than bite, but he drove that thing everywhere. And it was loud. It was obnoxious. It was crazy weird. And he did everything on that bike. He learned every little quirk and feature that would give Doug a run for his money. And let me tell you that when we did ride, when we did spend time together going through the back roads of Oak, Claire, Wisconsin, he would run lengths around me because he like skill caped that bike. He level 99 that thing. And even though it was slower than my 600 RR in every single way, he always outdrove me on that thing. And that's because he spent a lot of time fine tuning, honing in and really understanding the full capacity of the vehicle that he had built. Spending time and truly understanding the limits of that slow car you have can help you enjoy every single ounce of it. Cause a lot of times a slow car really isn't that slow. It's more about how we drive it. Whereas the supercars of the world with 650 horsepower stock and these muscle cars that are coming out at 35 grand that can just run like eight minute Nürburgring trips. It just, it's nuts to me, all right? It's not the way that you're gonna wanna do it, all right? When you jump into one of those cars, the fear of constantly throwing it into a wall sometimes prevents you from driving it how you truly want to. Whereas when you start with a slow car and you max it out, it's gonna feel you a lot more comfortable when you jump into something that's got a couple, two, three more horsepower. Spend time with the car in the back roads or local tracks to find out just how much abuse the car can take. Practice that manual rev matching and all the good stuff that makes the car do everything it possibly can to go fast. And when you start to really narrow that in, when you start to really hone that in, you can have a slow car that will beat the living crap out of some fast cars. Driving slow cars fast is like what you do for the first half of like a decade when you jump into cars, regardless of if you're 16 or 36. And so when you can jump into them and you can learn everything about them, it puts you on a great foundation. A lot of times people get bagged on for not having a fast car and it's not really what it's supposed to be about. It's about how you're able to maximize your driving experience with the car. So no matter if it's a Prelude, which by the way, still one of my favorite looking cars. Doesn't matter if it's a Miata, doesn't matter if it's a Civic, a 3023, or some sub $5,000 car your parents bought you. Enjoy it. Enjoy it as much as you can before jumping into something else. If you don't enjoy what the slow car can teach you, there's a chance that you may never learn to love what a fast car can give you. Oh, put that thing on a stamp. Put that in a business card, baby. That's, that's my, <laughs> that's my motto for today. But what do you think? Should it be just, should we just say shove all and install racing harnesses that take 23 minutes to install and throw a supercharger on it? Let us know below. And of course, if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com. And if you want a pro tip number four, you want to drive a slow car fast, get some damn good tires. That's a really good place to start because when you do to give max bonus, when you really start to send her, a lot of times those tires keeping you on the ground are what's going to help you a lot. That's why people throw proxy R888s onto me on it's because you just never have to lose grip. That's what makes them so dang fast. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries and we will see you later. Peace.